Okay, uh, good evening. Um, we are going to go ahead and call the uh, City Council special meeting uh, to order at uh, 5 o'clock. And I just want to make a note for people that might be here for the 6 o'clock. Uh, this is a, a budget working session that will go on for an hour until we start. Thank you. Um, City Clerk. And we'll do roll call. Mayor Edgar. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kusumoto. Here. Council Member Chirko. Here. Council Member Hassel. <coughs> Here. Council Member Murphy. Here. Great. Uh, we'll go ahead and go on to preliminary uh, general fund budget for fiscal year 2018-19 city manager. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Uh, you have before you tonight, this is a kickoff of the budget process. We really started it at the last meeting with our mid-year review. Um, this will get us into the fiscal year 2018-2019 preliminary budget for the general fund revenues and expenditures. Um, we have we reviewed this material with the budget standing committee last week received feedback which we've incorporated into the staff report and we will go through a presentation tonight Maria Luisa will go through um, the revenues and expenditures and answer any questions that the City Council may have and so with that I will introduce our interim director of administrative services Maria Luisa Valdez good evening Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. So tonight, um, I'll go over the 2018-19 preliminary budget for the general fund. So the report in front of you, as Brett um, mentioned, it already has gone through some revisions. We met with the Budget Standing Committee, and under their direction, we were able to close down the gap from over 100,000 to 29,530, which is what is reported on tonight's agenda. So we'll review the preliminary budget for and go over the revenues and expenditures and we're seeking for direction to discuss closing the budget gap throughout the process. So this is what it looks like. We have operating expenditures over our operating revenues and that's what creates um, the budget gap of 29530 Some underlying assumptions there is that we continue to have the budget savings from 2017-18, the six positions. So that creates 400000 in savings, and we had adopted that back in 1617 for the 1718 budget. We also have the vacant position for the recreation director, so that continues in the 1819. And we also, um, coming forward from the matrix organizational assessment report, we have adopted two full time positions into the budget of 2018 19. So you'll see that in the budget. So that's the underlying um, assumptions in there, just coming forward. So we go into 1819, the general fund revenue forecast. As you can see here, um, we're comparing it to the estimated actuals for 1718. <coughs> the preliminary budget <coughs> is um, expected to increase for 1819, expected to increase by 282,000. The major contributors for that are in the this descending order is property taxes by 177,000. Then there's licenses and permits for 137,000 and then transient, transient occupancy tax, and I'll just say TOT, and that's by 66,000. So property taxes um, are up by 177,000, and since 2012, we've continued to see the assessed value of property. Um, it's risen, and the city has seen at least 3% increase every year since 2012. And so we use HDL, our consultants, and they have provided us with a 4.1% growth rate. And that's really what's in, into the budget for 1819, and you see that increase of 177. 29% of our revenues come from property taxes, so that's why it's, it's the major contributor, and 4.1% is that. That's the type of effect it has of 177. Uh, I do have a question the, on this, if I may. Oh, yeah. So on, on the uh, user utility tax, um, you're forecasting it to be lower than you know, current year, uh, I guess estimated actually? Yes. Is um, it, is it, what's the contributing factor to that? Do you, do you have an understanding? You know? Everything does have increase. Let me go through my notes. But that one, it, I believe it has to do with telephone. With the telephone UT, or the, sorry. Okay. I'll look at it. I do have that. Um, and that's really the only reason it's down, but everything else is up. It, it's a little positive up. Oh, got it. Okay, thank you. Good question, but I'll get back to you about like that's the fine. exact. Good. Uh, that's okay. what I was looking for. Just, okay. Uh, so we have a, we have a, uh, a cause and, and why. Okay, that's that's really what I was looking for. Okay. So for um, the next largest one is licenses and permits, and for that one, there's a large increase of 137,000, and that's primarily due to 
anticipated projects that we know are coming forth. For example, there's a couple, but we do have a whole list, but I'll name Orange County Sanitation District that are expected to pull a permit and the Olson structures. So those are pretty large projects and we have everything accounted for that goes into that 1.18 um, budget for the licenses and permits. For TOT tax, we have um, incorporated one quarter of, of TOT and this is for the new hotel development in the city. So we are anticipating for them to commence on the hotel development next month and it seems reasonable for us to include a quarter so that would mean that it would open April 1st 2019 and this was um, direction from the budget standing committee and it was re it was reasonable to include that also um, so those are the three major contributors for the increase in the revenues there's also a decrease in the revenues from other agencies and that's just due to a one-time police distribution that was received in the prior year everything else <coughs> is within 20 to 30 thousand and it's reasonable but if you have any questions before I move on to expenditures I can gladly answer them Does anybody have any questions on revenue uh, just real quick on the police mm. grant that we got last year that's not are there any other grants or is this something we forecasted last year that we knew we were getting um, yes it was a state funded um, grant and we knew it was coming but as of my last talk with the captain, um, there doesn't seem to be any anticipated grants coming forward. Okay. At least for 1819, but we will continue to try and gain some and, and go for grant funding whenever possible. Okay. We're assuming the hotel comes in for the last quarter, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so April 1st to, yes, April 1st through June 30th, 2019. And where are they now? Um, as and, of the and, latest, and um, they are supposed to start construction on April 1st, uh, as, like next month. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, though, Stephen, or that, that's the latest. Okay, so I'll move forward to expenditures. So as you see here, we have an increase of 630000 out of the 630,000, 547 of it is due to salaries and benefits. So that's, just as a big overview, that's the largest component and the, the reason for the increase there. And it's really because we added two positions in the recreation and development services. Um, there was one recreation coordinator and one management analyst in those departments. There's also a loss of vacancy savings in the police department in the last budget workshop in the projected we talked about having significant police savings for 2017-18 as there were four vacancies and not for the whole year but you know throughout the year and so they realized some savings in the estimated actual so we have full staffing budgeted for in the 2018-19 and um Quick question oh yeah what's the feasibility that they're going to be fully staffed the entire year since the in the year starts in three months Th yeah, um, that was another discussion we were to have with the budget workshops and the budget standing committee, just realistic timelines of that. Um, I don't know, Brad, there, if you have <coughs> There definitely is a potential for vacancy savings in the police department in fiscal year 1819. So as we talk about the potential for closing the gap the rest of the way, we haven't included any of those savings in the budget. Okay. Right now it's fully staffed, but there would be room to um, incorporate some of those savings in there. We've just conservatively budgeted that at for the, the whole year. fully staffed minus the one position for the entire year. Okay. So out of the 547, as I mentioned, that was the increase for salaries and benefits, 284,000 is due to pensions. It's not exclusive, it's out of the uh, 547. But 284 is due to pensions. And 200 of that 284 is due to the unfunded accrued liability, which is the UAL payment, which is the payment due to CalPERS for our retirees. So that we have to pay regardless, and it's an increase that's been going on. And just as a snapshot of 2019-20, we're anticipated to pay 254000 in fiscal year 2019-20. So that's another increase in there. I will, I'll highlight the departments that have um, significant variance or, you know, a material variance. City manager, city clerk, they have um, an increase there and it's due to some salaries and benefits. There's a third part-time receptionist included in that budget 
and that is 15,000. Retirement um, <coughs> loan for this department is 14,000. And there's also, a, in 2018-19, we have an election, so there's increased costs for their budget of 11,000 and codification of 8,000. For police, as I mentioned before, they have um, some salary savings in 17-18, so we're just assuming full staffing in 2018-19, and that's an increase of 312,000. Out of the 312, 177,000 of that is due to retirement, so the increase for that department is 177. And aside from that, 35,000 is due to the Westcom contract. For development services, they have an increase of 285. That really is mostly comprised of 204 for salaries and benefits that has to do with um, the man management analyst. That full-time position is in this department. And also there's 54,000 um, allocated for pensions in this department. Aside from that, there's 33,000 in building inspections as there's more permit revenue. There's also an increase in that, in that development services expenditure there. And there's also 23,000 in utilities and 24,000 for maintenance in the pump station. Um, is that addition to the pump station, is that a one-time cost or is that from now on? It hasn't been maintained for about over 20 years and it's very significant, but I, I believe now it needs more maintenance. And I don't know if Stephen, if you want to expand on that or. You'll see this maintenance reflected in this budget, but you also see a potential replacement in the CIP when it comes to you, because we're looking at replacing the whole thing. But this is just for maintenance. Yeah. If we end up replacing the whole thing in the next year, fiscal year, we'll be able to adjust this money. Okay. To summarize, for the 1819 expenditures, 630000 was the increase, as we saw on the last table. Salaries and benefits accounts for 547,000. 200 of that is an increase in the UAL payment, the unfunded accrued liability. Um, the assumptions there that there's full staffing in 2018-19, particularly I'm talking about the police department. So there's some loss of vacancy savings when we're mm. to this 1718 um, estimated actuals. And it also includes two new positions in the recreation and development services department. Throughout the budget workshop and you know in April and May we'll go over the budget overview and for April 16th actually we'll have a budget overview to go through each department and see how those dollars are used to serve the community. So here I have um, a chart of the his historical and projected pension costs. As we've discussed pensions is a huge factor for the increase in expenditures and it'll continue to have a steep increase. As you can see here from 2009 Actually, it's pretty blurry, but from 2009 to 2015, our pension costs remain relatively flat, about a million dollars. But CalPERS had, us, had a shorter amortization period that they adopted, and this would take effect for 2015-16. And so it had, what that really translates to us, it means more pension costs, an increase in pension costs. So when we're talking about 2018-19, you see, I, I said that it was a 284,000 increase. That means it's a 1.8 million that we're paying there just four years ago we were paying a million so that's eight hundred thousand increase and then looking four years forward to 2023 we have a 1.2 million increase there so it goes even steeper so you can see we're almost at three million at the end of 2020 2022-23 so that's really if we're looking at 2018-19 which is what with the budget that we're looking at we're halfway point we've already increased 800,000 in four years and we're expected to increase 1.2 million in the next four years um, and that pretty much concludes my presentation on 2018-19 budget okay <clears throat> let me bring it back to the council let me ask the ad hoc committee when you guys were going through and you see that uh, that pretty steep pension curve um, did, did we think about like the years past next year kind of what would uh, be the idea because it seems like we're heading for a cliff that we uh, you know we you know we're gonna have to make some hard decisions um, you know we're looking at potentially fully staffing up and we're gonna have a matrix uh, review of the organization coming up in the normal part of the meeting but it seems like we really do have um, a, a bad structural problem and the, you know the only other slide that you could put up there to show it against would be the uh, surplus that we have of you know seven to eight million dollars as we draw down to zero uh, before we hit ground and if you look at that 1.8 million dollars per year then that would be about four or five years away 
So we probably, uh, in the ad hoc committee, I, I'm just curious, did you guys have any thoughts on the kind of next steps or anything that we should do as a council to start taking this a little bit more uh, from a different perspective? I, from, <clears throat> excuse me, from my perspective, I, the only thing that, that we could do immediately is lose the savings of paying early to save that money. You know, it's it, it really is a problem without a solution. I I feel mm -hmm. um, not only citywide but statewide, and we're kind of at a loss. You know. Same same. We didn't really go on uh, out beyond the next uh, budget year. We're trying to get that number to zero um, for that year. But no, we we didn't really discuss in depth any any solutions to the pension issue. So. Uh, city manager I, I know that before in our other workshops you've talked about pension bonds we've talked about district uh, kind of business district uh, uh, types of activities uh, sales tax um, all of those things um, how far do we go until we start really talking about and engaging the community to start because we, we need to start talking now about some of the alternatives that we're going to have yeah. available I think we're there now I mean we've talked to the standing committee and as as um, Councilmember Hasselbrink and Councilmember Cherko were on the standing committee mentioned we, we right now we're focusing in on closing the gap and having a balanced budget for fiscal year 1819 but we did talk about 1920 as Maria Luisa mentioned you know we have a $250,000 additional mm -hmm. increase in PERS cost next year so we have a 10 year cash flow analysis that shows that growth and like you're talking about the the growth in the expenditure over the time period through 2000 22 23 and then we have a corresponding chart that shows the reduction in fund balance so we will be discussing options like you mentioned um, none of them as, as council member Asselbrink, none of them are popular none of them are um, positive mm -hmm. solutions but mm -hmm. there is something that has to be done to uh, for a long-term solution so we will bring information <coughs> to the standing committee and then to the council as we go through the budget process and as we go through this year but we need to do it now yes the one slide that you showed that uh, that it actually hits up to three million dollars and that's just labor pension uh, that ends up being for every person that we have on staff we're paying almost for a full another person to be retired mm -hmm. so uh, you know for 25 people we're paying 50 people to be retired and it just seems like we probably need to really start engaging the community. I know the chief, uh, if he was here, you know, when we started uh, looking at police issues, we started having engagement with the community. We would meet in the different districts of uh, the city and talk to the different uh, areas and just let them know what's going on, hand out information. Um, long after I'm off, I, I think that there would have, that, you know, we, we need to really talk about that engagement with, uh, with the community and really laying this out. Yeah, we're and, putting together a, a packet of, um, public relations type material to educate the public educate the standing committee and the council so mm -hmm. we're going to start with the standing committee and take this material that Maria Luis mm -hmm. and I are putting take it to them and then take it to the full council and take it out into the community as well okay. and, and mayor I think one of the things that we would like to recommend as the ad hoc is as soon as we get through this budget season and, and passed and everything that we need to sit down and really look at the options and the viability I know we've talked about them but as far as a, a workshop and what what really are our next steps, um, mm -hmm. I think that needs to be as a council, as a group, and not just the ad hoc committee. Sure. Um, and looking at the sales tax, looking at TOT, looking at the business district tax, I mean, all the different, the pension liability bonds, all the different ones. And so at least we can rule some things out that we're not interested in, mm -hmm. and then really pursue the things that make sense for us. So the pension obligation bonds would have to actually start through the process by January if you were going to think about it and the interest rates are going up so I, I don't know I, does anybody on the council think that this is something that we should have more of a community workshop or something to talk about this with the community because the worst scenario is sales tax increase but if you watch Westminster all these other cities have had to do this um, you know they they did it reactionary we, we know now we can see we're heading down a path unless we decide we're going to cut back services we're not going to get there from here yeah, if we were heading down that path as an option to educate the community and yeah. talk, get out in front of it and proactively discuss the need to do that to pay off the pension liability. I mean, mm -hmm. we're getting out in front of it, paying it off and having long-term fiscal sustainability. That's one option. And there will be other options that we need to discuss with the public and starting with the council and starting with the standing committee. 
Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts? I, I just think we also need to engage the community as soon as possible with all the options. So at least they've got some buy-in and some ownership of it. So it just doesn't look, we're doing a sales tax and that's, you know, they, I want them to see the process of what we're going through mm -hmm. and all the different options and why whatever we choose was truly the best option for us. So I think early engagement is best. Okay. So, so if I can, you know, on the, I, I am really opposed to the sales tax and even the, uh, the pension bond, but I'm certainly going to be open to that. But um, the thing that, that we really get 100% of is our utility tax. You know, is there some analysis, I'm looking at you, city managers, is there some analysis that says that we can actually, you know, offset any kind of a one cent sales tax with uh, an increase in utility tax, put it to the voters like we should, and see really where, you know, where things, you know, lie with that. Either one has to go to the voters. But utility tax is, is the money we get. It doesn't go to the State Board of Equalization to be handed back to us. It just actually is here. Yeah, right? I think it can be considered as part of a packet of information. Mm -hmm. It's not a standalone solution because that budget gap that we have to close in the long term is too mm -hmm. significant for just an increase in utility users tax offset so, by some but, but okay. sales tax, but so, perhaps it could be a piece of. But okay, so sales tax at one cent equates to how much and even just in now dollars what's that I three, mean, it would be approximately three million a one percent sales tax increase three million and then the utility tax won't come close to that a utility tax increase and it's across the board right utility tax increase yeah it would depend on what is done but well, if there's but, some sort so, of an offset well that's what i'm asking so when so what's the analysis it says you know we look at what the traditional uh, consumption is right we're going to get new homes put in and it's going to be more consumption uh, hotel goes in and we're going to get you know utility consumption there what's what's that going to be and where's the analysis for that I, I'd really like to see that before we you know go down this path of saying the sales tax is the only way to get this I, yeah I think it's I, it's fair to put that in the package of everything that we're discussing okay yeah. so uh, please when you do that be make it as comprehensive as possible okay. yeah councilmember Murphy I, th I think I think it's important that we get the 10 year th slide I wish we had the slide of that that Brett developed that we all got a copy of kind of self-explanatory uh, even though it's very bleak you know it's uh, people have to know that this is not a well it is a projection but this is the reality as we see it based upon how things are now mm -hmm. and where they're going if we don't do anything and I think that's in line with what you're saying mayor that yeah. that's uh, where we need that's where the education needs mm -hmm. to start that this this potential deficit is our problem Mm -hmm. And how do we get out of it? And, right. and that's, and as the mayor pro tem said, you know, we do need to get it out to the community and, and get their opinions. And, you know, uh, we're going to do their will. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to either have to cut or tax. It's no magic solution, but we, we do need to start that as soon as this process is over. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further to add. Yeah. Um, so th there's two things that are going on. We, we're looking at a preliminary budget. Staff and the committee did a really good job of getting us to uh, to break even. I think we're talking about a bigger issue. Um, and I think as we have our budget workshops to the very end of June, where we have to pass the budget for next year, we should continue down that path. And I guess, city manager, based on what I'm hearing, I'd like you to think about putting together maybe a community workshop. You know, I look at things like two to three years down the road, and I want to be able to show a track record of direct engagement on the pension issue and how we're going to overcome it so that two years from now, if we have to do something draconian, which uh, hopefully we never will, at least we have engaged the community, got their involvement, and went through that process. So if you can uh, bring back maybe uh, an idea of maybe a community workshop and maybe even setting up things within uh, different areas of precincts within the uh, city where the council members, or maybe I'll go um, and talk a little bit about it, just get people together, and then we'll just have flyers and hand it out just to educate, maybe put together a survey or something that we could collect indirect data to be able to help us make a better decision. Yeah, okay. I think that's great. If the council as a whole wants to wants us to do that, we'll bring that back through the budget process and to the standing committee as well. Okay. Um, so at this point, this was just an uh, overview of the budget. I don't think we're uh, voting to approve it, correct? No. Correct. Okay. No, but we do have a budget gap of 29530 Sure. But with the budget standing committee, we're working closely to close down that budget, possibly have savings. Okay. Okay, does anybody else have anything to add? Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
So uh, with that, uh, that was our only agenda item for this uh, special meeting. We're going to go ahead and close this meeting at 530 and uh, we'll come back for a regular meeting at six o'clock. Thank you.